This is Lilith the Star. I'm currently joined by my friend Woody and Invader Zim Hello. from Twitch. Hi. So today we are going to do a uh, a quick discussion on um, GMing tips and hints for tabletop roleplay. Did say I was branching back out into this, so as promised, here we go. So. We're just going to jump straight in with some like discussion points. Um, one of us is going to say something, and the rest of us are going to bring up some examples or things that we have to say about that point. We're going to start with Woody. <laughs> Excellent. <clears throat> Not on the spot at all. Um, one of my main sort of ethos is, I suppose you could say, when I'm GMing is. Uh, have fun and remember everybody else wants to have fun as well it's quite important to me when i'm running a game that my players are entertained that they are enjoying it and they are they feel it's as much their story as it is mine uh, i tend to sort of look a lot of gming as as mutual storytelling uh, it's a good one to remember. Um, of course, obviously, uh, quite a few of these actually link into that one. So it's a good one to start off with. Well done. Mm. <laughs> um, it's the biggest one to obviously remember if you're a player as well. You are there to have fun, but it means that you are there to have fun with other people. So the other people are just as important as you. The only uh, difference I find is, as a GM is you've got to have a bit more of control on the situation because you're the one that's actually telling everyone roughly the direction to go. And I think that's the word, is roughly which direction to go. No, oh, be a total control freak. You would do as I say, the way I say it. <laughs> I'm not... Pl I, no, if you want me to have a generic story, a story that's set, get, write me a book. I was kidding. I know. <laughs> write me a book, Colin. No, I can't write... Give me a crayon, I'll draw you a picture. Um, but, but, uh, uh, by the way, folks, the gentleman who's just said he can't write has uh, created some of the most wonderful stories and scenarios in game that I've ever come across. Just thought I'd embarrass him by saying that. And you'll never see them. <laughs> <laughs> I have the props, so oh. you might see them. Dang it. <laughs> um, yeah, what were we talking about again? <laughs> <laughs> The DMing points, like yeah, okay, okay, so yeah. make it make it fun, okay. Um, I would say my biggest thing is try and if you if you're running the game, try and run one that players would want to play in rather than one that you'd want to play in. Um, because oh, yes. we've all sat in games where it's sort of like the person who's written it is written it because it's something they wanted to play. Um, yeah, there's that one. Mm. Yeah, well, that, again, we get to a point we're going to cover it. So it is something that does happen a fair amount. Or if you do write a game that you would like to play in, um, don't get angry with the players when they don't take it the way you want it to go. Um, if you have written it a game that you want to play, give it to another GM maybe to run for you, and then you can play it. Is an idea. But remember that just because you want to play a thriller doesn't necessarily mean, especially if you've pitched it as, say, a horror, that you aren't that that's what the players are going to want to play. If you have said that your characters are going to be a specific group of characters, try and write it to those characters as well, which kind of fits into the same thing. Yeah, if you've got a team of players who've all created assassin-y type characters, don't have them investigate your stuff. They're rubbish at it. They like sneaking around and stabbing people, not yeah. like looking at clues. Yeah, so remember, write a game if you want to... If you one of your players has written that a character is a talking great day, they're into investigation. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so my turn to come up with one. Oh, no, sorry, do you uh, have the, one? There was just one more uh, point yeah. uh, based on that. Uh, there is absolutely nothing wrong. In fact, I encourage it with um 
if you've got a regular gaming group, saying, what do you want to play? What would you like to play? And I know um, the, the two people sitting with me now uh, uh, have done that and said, well, what, what do you want to do? I've, I've got this, but what would you like to do? So having that discussion with your players always, uh, always a useful thing. Remember that time I said, all I really want to do is chase all you guys through a forest carrying a very big knife. Yeah. That was funny. Yeah. Never happened, but... <laughs> I did say I was up for it. Um... <laughs> yeah. I'm making a note. Future game. Yeah, that's fine by me. I, forest, I'm up for... Forest knife chase. I'm up for serial killer stories. Um... <laughs> Maybe not so much one of our other players, but I'm up for them. Um, oh God, now I'm. Uh, I had loads of them in my head. And now they're all gone. Yep. Um, don't snap at your players if it's going the wrong way. Uh, you may. Have... Why not? Damn it! It's their fault. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> if you've written something to happen one way, uh, the biggest thing to remember is. Uh, no plan has ever survived contact with the enemy. Your enemy, and I'm using air quotes here, is your players. They will look at your story and they will take it a different way that you never planned it. Don't get angry them for them for doing that. Run with it. They've come up with something amazing. Just tweak your story. That, that tends to be a good way to work. They'll always come up with something you never thought of. Yeah, and w one that links into that uh, is... Um... Uh, never ever punish your players for being cleverer than you. But believe me, it happens to me quite a lot. I think I've come up with a clever idea. <laughs> and um, uh, it turns out I've been outwitted, and, and usually in a very creative way. And you, you, you can use that. It can be a brilliant thing. Um, and there is absolutely no point in you know, uh, getting annoyed that... Um, uh, your plans have been outwitted. You know, see it as a challenge. See it as an amazing direction to take the story. Uh, there's a... I can't remember the name of the person who says it, but if you are challenging yourself, you're not growing. So don't see it as a, a problem. See it as something to help you grow as a GM. Use it. It will bring. It will give you more outlets for your, your game than you thought. And it also means that people don't get angry at you and they want to play your games because it's never going the way that they saw it happening either, which is really, really good. And if you have a player who regularly thwarts you, just put them in a, a long, painful and elaborate and possibly easy to escape from death trap. I mean the player, not the character. Yeah. <laughs> Tie them to a table, have a circular saw blade. Mm, edit that part out, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> you're, you're stuck with that now. <laughs> Um, Great. Yes. Sounds like I'm advocating murdering troublesome players. I'd been dead years ago. You are one of our favourite troublesome players. Absolutely. I, mean, I don't know. I think my last troublesome character was a bit annoying. I like Cleric. <laughs> Cleric was amazing. I do not know. <laughs> <laughs> Careful though, someone might steal the copyright on that. Uh. <laughs> uh, uh. But by the way, folks, um, uh, Lyric was um, in a d, &D game, uh, was a bard, and um, just... was an orcish bard. It was an orcish bard, that's right. And I brought out this most amazing uh, stream of creative, creative insults as we were facing down the sort of villain of the piece. <laughs> it was quite impressive, actually. Yeah. You got another one? I still think my, my favourite one from that night was Your mama is so fat It should, takes up more tiles than a gelatinous cube Yes Gelatinous cubes take up lots of tiles They do <laughs> uh. yeah. Why he comes from the deep south I don't know but I just thought it was funny well, It seems to be a bit of a tradition With um, with, with our games and orcs Yeah they, 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 they. Do you think he's related to Prue? Um, he is now Yes <laughs> <laughs> Yes, um, uh, just to explain that, um, Prudence was a Southern Bell orc who, I'm not going to say I created the character, it kind of invented itself yeah. in a, 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 a wonderful game called Warrior Wenches. Uh, another one, uh, as the GM, if you find that rules are frustrating your players, 
Find a way to change the rules with the player's help. So something that would be more interesting. Don't just punish them for not being able to get your head, their head around particular rule sets. Not all of us are advanced level accountants, um, as, as the saying goes. Uh, the games are there to have fun. And if, if one of your players is a rule heavy character person, great. But if everyone else isn't, you've got to try and balance it out and try and keep everybody in mind that rules don't always work because they can be just as fr easy to frustrate your roleplay game as they can to give you, as it enable the roleplay game. So be aware of that. I uh, completely agree with that. Um, again, w one thing for sort of various reasons, I'm not very good with numbers and uh, simple rules really help me when I'm a player in the game and uh, like you said it's <clears throat> it, it's just seeing them as something that can help expedite things in the game rather than being a um, a be all and end all one thing I'm particularly proud of in our gaming group is we've gone whole game sessions before without actually rolling a dice and uh, I tell some people that and, and, and they don't believe me, but it's absolutely true. Uh, you know, just have the numbers and the dice rolling there for, for when they're needed and um, uh, don't be afraid to kind of take a screwdriver to them sometimes. Yeah. We can use screwdrivers now to settle disputes in games. Awesome. No. <laughs> I'm going to go shank happy. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, we can't. Oh. I'm afraid not. Uh, Although I think at one point you should have a character called Shank Happy. Shank Happy. <laughs> yeah, that's... There you go. If you can do it, I'm not saying I'm brilliant at it, but I'm trying. If you're GMing and you've got lots of NPCs, try to make them all sound different. Otherwise they all just sound like you and that's a trip down a very horrific path. <laughs> Could you imagine being in a room surrounded by people who all sound the same? Uh, yeah. No. Uh, you know, not not like animated series level of voice acting different, but try and do something. Yeah, just give yourself a little bit of difference. Uh, uh, I'd like to point out at this point that um, uh, when it comes to doing that, I definitely do not use it as an excuse ever to try out silly voices at all. No, no. Yeah. Where's the gin, damn it? <laughs> Ah, get back in your box, you crazy old bat. <laughs> um, I'm terrible for this one because I don't have many um, voices other than my own, which apparently when on record, uh, recorded devices sounds like a 12-year-old. So, unfortunately, I'm kind of stuck. It's true, you're being given GMing tips <clears throat> by a 12-year-old right now, <laughs> where it sounds like that anyway. Yeah, I'm uh, not. <laughs> she's actually about 15. Shh. Oh, They're not supposed to know that. Sorry. Uh, I, I, I'd, I'd just like to point out that um, uh, uh, even though the good lady lady says that, um, she actually has been uh, responsible for one of the most um, unnerving voices I've ever come across. I ran a uh, Changing the Dreaming game oh, right, yes. <laughs> a few years ago. In fact, the two people with me now played the best characters in the game. Uh, Mr. Tinker Train, a a very very scary. What? what, what? He was just a weirdo. Just yes, I'm, I'm not sure what Kithy was. I can't remember it. Yes. Uh, no. Oh, all I remember is he had no eyelids and he had a chimeric monkey which kept his eyes moist by yeah. licking them. <laughs> Called and Blink. He, yes, that's it. And did you used to say Blink? Yeah, whenever I said yeah. Blink, yeah. it would give you the mental image <laughs> of this monkey just licking his Can eyes. Can you do his voice? I can't remember what his voice was. No? No. Okay, I'll do... I, I do Maybe it sounded something like this. I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, that was, that was it. <laughs> but, but the other character I was mentioning, uh, of course, was um, Misery, who was uh, uh, a slaw. And uh, for anybody who's played or GM'd um, Changing the Dreaming, slaw cannot speak above a whisper. Yeah. And uh, very, 
very scary and unnerving voice. <laughs> Uh, and also shards of mirror for teeth. Yep, she was a fun character. I'll see if I can get my voice to do it now because I haven't done it for a while. So my name is Misery, and I was very, very. I hate to be alone. So everyone knows Misery loves company. <laughs> and that ruins my voice for ages. So <laughs> I'm not going to do much more of that. I should hope not. That's, yeah. that's, uh. <laughs> well, that was if you can do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you can do it, give your give your NPCs a different voice, even if it's just slightly changing your voice an octave. Obviously, you don't wreck your voice unless you can afford to do that. So, um, <laughs> but that's always a good one. All oh, right, so um, back to me. Um, it's, it's perhaps a bit of a small point, but I'm going to mention it because I think sometimes I'm going to put my hand up and say. I'm guilty of this. Um, as a GM, sometimes you're not going to get it right. With the best intention of the world, you're not going to get it right. And it's okay. Uh, I have a tendency when I do that to kind of feel like I've let my players down. But really, if I think about it, uh, it it's okay if uh, you introduce an idea or or even a plot or something like that and it doesn't quite work. Because it's something to learn from. And if you don't try new things and sort of experiment a bit, um, as per the point made earlier about about growing, you know, you kind of, uh, if you don't dare a little bit every now and again, uh, you're not going to sort of grow as a GM, in my opinion. No. Well, no, you're not. It's, it's not even just your opinion. It's, it's the way everything works. If you don't try and reach that little bit farther every time, you're never going to reach get there you've got to keep pushing but you should also learn from your mistakes so if you figure out that your players aren't enjoying themselves as much as they could be try and change the story if that doesn't work and they're still not enjoying the characters involved then find a way a good way a very uh, to quickly maybe end it and start something else or give someone else a chance to run a game or find a way to pause it that is natural to the story. One of the worst things you can do is go, I'm not doing, the, I, I'm not getting where I want to go, the players aren't enjoying it, and just going, I can't do this anymore, I'm drawing a line there, because then if you ever do go back to it, you've got to pick it up where you left it off, and there's no way that you can change it from that point anyway. Um, you, you, you just may, you know, try and end it naturally anyway. Don't just draw a line under it, and because you may want to pick up bit, bits of those characters again, or maybe even those characters in a different setting. Um, you just need to, you know, keep a bead on what your players are, are after at the same time as yourself. As All one. else fails. Jingle your keys. Ooh, shiny, shiny. Yeah, it's very distracting. Jing, 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 look at the keys. Look at the shiny, shiny. Actually, that brings us on to a really good one. What, jingling keys or putting your all your keys in a bowl? No. We're not going to have that conversation. But I want your car. But that's a <laughs> breakfast cereal I don't want to eat. Bowl of keys on the mouth. Yeah. So, the point I was making was... Sorry. Try and in... No, it's all right. You can sidetrack it. It's always good to be sidetracked. Try and include more props and things into... No, not name. the dictaphone. Not the scary dictaphone. No, never. It doesn't exist anymore. Good. It's dead. That terrified the living daylights out If of you it. can get a reaction like that out of your players when you mention a prop again, you've no, done a really good job. No, not the again. But yeah, try and make memorable things like props and things happen in your game. Hmm. I totally agree with that. Um, am I am I right to pick yeah, that yeah, up? Yeah. If I can pass over something to be put in front of the uh, camera, for for example. Now, um, there, there was a game quite a few years ago uh, with the aforementioned uh, dictaphone, uh, which I believe was inspired by Fatal Frame Stroke Project Zero. The camera was. The, yes. the dictaphone was kind of just a... Something based on, plucked out of my nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> it was based on EVP yeah. sessions and stuff to do with ghosts, because yeah. you can actually record ghosts yes. and stuff, apparently. I hated that dictaphone. 
Yeah, it was something that kept appearing in the game, no matter how much the characters like to destroy it. <laughs> but, but we had cameras as props, and they really did become a kind of intrinsic part of our, of our role-playing. We were sort of holding them almost <laughs> like they were weapons. Um, yes, and... and uh, but there, we, there have been other things like in uh, uh, Invader Zim's game, we've had uh, journals that our characters kept, and they were actually journals for the characters, not for the players to keep. No you know, the characters were keeping notes, which is you know you should keep notes anyway if you're playing. But they were a really good way. Like when one session someone forgot their journal, we'd like thought it had been stolen, and that was quite fun. <laughs> and like we never wanted to leave our journals behind as the players. And whenever the, the GM kept trying to find ways of having them taken away from us, we were like, no, don't do that! And if you can, um, Loki's saying hello. If you, uh, if you can do that to your players, that's a really good thing. So props are a good thing to try and introduce into your gaming. They always add another level. And I don't necessarily mean the D&D &D miniatures. Um, they're good if you really feel you need to understand how... Uh, combat works but I don't find them useful I've never found them useful um, I find if I can't imagine it in my head having little figures on the board isn't going to help me mm. so um, in a game I'm running at the moment um, called Vampire of the Opera um, players... in stores soon <laughs> <Get> in. <laughs> Just kidding I, uh, the players received um, keys and also there was a, a box with some rather odd um, letters in them yes. as well. Uh, uh, again, I, I I hadn't thought of using props for years until um, until basically you ran yeah. <laughs> came um, uh, with the men. But yeah, I totally agree with that. Yes, so... I, I think that's... A a couple of good points for people to to try and like use to to grow your game so yeah. if you've enjoyed this then please like the video and subscribe to the channel um obviously if you haven't just lie about it and give it a like anyway yeah that works too <laughs> uh I, I i'm very easy to please a like or subscribe Jeez and i'll be happy not. sorry they're sorry. not supposed to know that about me sorry lady high maintenance <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. You I'm wound kidding. me. I'm so upset. Um, and if this, and um, um, as I was saying, unfortunately, uh, maybe uh, not. Unfortunately, I don't know if the guys would want their own channels. Um, but Invader Zim does not have his own channel, and neither does Woody. Um, also goes by Build Boy. <laughs> yes, uh, I I do technically have um, uh, uh, an account on YouTube. So if I Never got myself together and actually recorded something I could put a video up. So I will leave a link to your channel and uh, maybe if, if you do if you do um, create some videos you could I, I could give you this to post up uh, if you want. If, if nothing else there's some slightly odd playlists there so knock yourself out. There we go. <laughs> so um, and uh, Invader Zim joins me for um, every couple of nights for Twitch and if you uh, like his sense of humour then please follow me on Twitch as that's where you'll be seeing him on, on Twitch. Yeah, I do come without a filter sometimes, yes, I'm sorry. Yes, he does. Um, but then again, it's all the more fun for it. So, thank you and if you like this we'll probably do some more. So, take care and goodbye. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye.